Wayne. What's up, brother? How was your week, Wade? Snipe is here. Hey. Wait, did you have a good week, Wade? How was your week? Hey, Snarky, welcome. Been a tough couple of weeks, brother. I'm sorry to hear that. Trippy Taro, how are you? I get your request. Welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm sorry about that, Wade. Dude, you know, if you need me, you got my number. Call me up. You can talk, uh, talk about anything. You know that. Uh, I, I believe Trippy Taro knows who you are. Thank you for being here. Appreciate that. Snarky, thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting your friends. Wade? Please do. Seriously, please do. Wait. Please. I mean, it doesn't matter, matter the time. It doesn't matter the day. You just give me a heads up. Hey, I want to reach out to you. I'll make it. I'll make the time, man. I'll be available. Can I ask anybody in the room? Is the audio okay? I'm on earbuds right now. I have a fan blowing, but just want to make sure that the audio is okay. Of course, Wade. Absolutely. And, let's see. Is he still there? Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, I've been getting messages all day from uh, other people in the group. Uh, it's been, I guess, one of those days. It's been hard. Audio's good? Awesome. Great. Thank you. It's been one of those days for everybody. Energetically, I think. There's a lot of people who... Thank you, Snarky. Snarky, why don't you call in? Uh, we're waiting for a few more people to join. But you're welcome to call in. If not, let's see, I'll invite you to join and see if that works. There you go. Here, hang on. Hello. Welcome. Hey, how's it going today? Uh, it's one of those days. Seems like it's one of those days for everybody. Yeah, I don't know. Mine's been okay. Yeah? Oh, good. Good. I've been getting messages all day about how uh, it's been kind of draining for certain people. and That's tough. No, I don't like that. That energy is out there. Yeah. Hey. Hey, Ezra. <laughs> Aubrey, um, welcome. It's definitely... Hey, Aubrey. Um, out there swirling around with everybody. Last week was kind of my week with that. Right, right. But, you know, you you survived. Your family survived. Everybody's yep. as well as can be, you know? Mm -hmm. Funny how time works like that for us as humans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have my, uh, my youngest son here with me visiting. He lives on another island. Um... Cool. And he came here to visit because it's a local holiday for us here. And he just, he's hanging out, but he can be hmm, a little trying. He's in his team. So there's a lot of uh, need for him that needs to be met. Yeah. But he's, uh, he's, he's doing well. Oh, you got a bunch of friends coming. That's cool. Welcome. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm going to turn my air conditioner off. Yeah, I uh, see a lot of familiar people. Look at that. I think this is the most people we had in a very long time. <laughs> Uncle Wade can come and help. Yeah, Uncle Wade. Uncle Wade's going to have to come and help. 
Starry Eyes. There she is. There's Starry. Welcome, Ari. Hey. How are you? So, uh, real quickly, uh, Snarky, before I make the official uh, introduction, I do have some moderators. Uh, Starry Eyed was one of them. Her name's Ari. I also have another one, Grizz, who I think you follow, Jade Tiger. She's okay. another moderator. And I have uh, another man, Josh, who I think is also part of the tribe in Jade Tiger's uh, group chat. So I have to add Wade. I have to make sure we add Wade and anyone else who wants to join. But welcome, everybody. Welcome to our are live on Fridays. Uh, I'm excited because uh, we have a, a new guest, a new friend to make this week. We tried uh, last week, but uh, life had a little curveball. But I'm glad everything worked out. I'm glad uh, the, your family members doing better. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, good. Okay. How's mom? How did mom take it? She sounded like it was a uh, a long it was, night. It was stressful. That's that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and then like after where she like just keeps running around anyways is also stressful. <laughs> but I I'm taking it your daughter is very young. Um, she is fifteen. Ah, so, okay. just hyper, just hyper. <laughs> I got it. I think that age, at, at that age, I think teenagers are trying to discover who they are. Yeah. Like my son, he's trying to discover who he is. He's, he says he's being authentic in who he is as a person. And I told him that's great. And I encourage him. Yeah. But he's, he's like your daughter, can't keep him down, he has to go. All the time has to be in the door. <laughs> Yeah, it's a hard age. It's really, I remember when I was that age. It's tough. Yeah, I, I purposely forget what it was to be a teenager because <laughs> I think I gave my parents a very difficult time. Same. Sadly, sadly, I don't think I've changed. I think I still give them a difficult time. <laughs> but, oh well, that's how it goes. They probably so, like well, it anyways. Um, my parents are up there in age. They they are over seventy five years old. They're set in their ways. Mm. Um, but things have to be their way, or it's not good enough. I see. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Well, I'm the rebel in the family, so I'm the only one that barks back and does not fall into that conditioning like my other siblings. And I so like I'm that. Like the, I'm like the black sheep of the family, but I, I haven't been that way. Yeah. Well, so, hi, Aubrey's sister. <laughs> I am waiting for one person in particular because she is um, one of the Grizz, Jane Tucker. She was supposed to do a carpool for us first, but um, I think instead of waiting. Excuse me. No, My phone okay. flew out. There we go. I was trying to turn you up a little bit, and you flew out of the thing. Yeah, my, my audio sometimes is not. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so let me turn mine up as well. <laughs> I like Trippy Tara's attitude of everything. Me too. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and get started because I don't want to keep you longer than you need to be. I know you have a family to go to and the time difference. Well, it is like super late here. They're, most of them are in bed. Ah, but, um, okay. If you want to wait, we can wait. I just have a uh, big pile of art here to show you and that's about it. I think it's good that we keep moving, keep moving forward. Okay. All right. We can well, always rearrange our schedule and do what we need to see afterwards. So I'm fine with that. Okay. What I have with me is a recent, um, 
I had it in a CBD store in the town next to me. So it's like kind of like a recent installation that I just took down. So it's all labeled and everything. These okay, are before like... you do that, let, let me make the introduction real quick. Okay. Because we're going to be editing this video and it's Ooh. actually going to be put on another platform with your okay. permission. So welcome everybody to our Friday Night Live. Thank you for all the new viewers and other replay viewers and anyone who will be watching this video in the future. I appreciate you all being here tonight. And uh, our guest tonight will be doing a presentation of her art book is at Purdy Snarky. So if you're not following her, please do so. If you're not following each other in the room, please do so as well. If you're not following me, please do that as well. And without further ado, Sparky, the floor is yours. All right. Well, first we have some watercolor art. This is like a tiny postcard. Little turtle. Wow, that's pretty cool. Now, <laughs> now what kind of uh, medium is that? This is actually a blank postcard. Like the front of it is blank, but the back you actually could mail it. Um, I used watercolor and thanks um, marker on this one. Oh, okay. I see. So, all these little ones I use the same watercolor. There's a man of war. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, what do we got? A ginkgo. A kinko now is that's a that's a plant, isn't it? Yep. Is it a root? Is um, that what's used at that plant? This one, I'm pretty sure is a tree. I think you can use the root though of it. I'm not oh. sure for what. Okay. Very okay. cute tree. Um these next ones kind of all go together and I might have to not show some of them because they might have a little nudity. Let me just check. Well, we might be okay. Remember, this is for educational purposes. <laughs> so <laughs> these, these like go together kind of like as an expression of love, lust, kind of like a little story. So I gotta oh, I get like them in that. the right order here. There's a story yeah. behind it. Yes. So here's the first one. This is acrylic on canvas ah. board. Here's the second one. Oh, I like that one. Thank you. The colors are amazing. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Oh, then we got this one. Oh, the mask is broken on this one. Yes. Oh, wow. Interesting. Very, like, symbolic one. Right. Oh, so yeah. notice in that, in that last one you had, if this you one? back up for just a second, yeah. So, like, in the first two you had, there were more colors, more vibrant. The yep. energy was a little bit different than them. And this one... I see the background has more like a fiery, destructive type, broken mask, breaking out of something maybe. Yeah. Pa lots of passion. I like that. Then we got... There's both of them. Okay, when does the nudity come in? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right now, but... Okay, cool. It's kind of, like, not obvious. Wow. We should I be fine. Like There's no, like, fine detailing. Right. right, right. I like that one. Thank you. And then this is the last one. It's a happy ending. Yes. Oh, I like that. It's like a series. Yeah. So I like 
I'll be asking you questions in between if that's okay. So okay. let me ask you, how did you come up with the idea? Um, probably from Is my own on... personal awkward love experiences. Um, you know, sometimes you think you're in love and you're not. Sometimes it kind of just like, it starts up here and just goes down. I kind of just used like my whole life experience with that to come up with this um, series. So before you even put one of uh, one of those um, those pictures out, you come up with this idea. Just I'm curious how how artists come up with this idea. Starry eyed mm -hmm. senses is another artist as well. I personally, oh, thanks, Starry. Um, I personally go into it without a sketch if it's something that I'm going to intuitively, like with feeling, create because I want it to come out as I'm going. I don't want to like restrict. But I do notice that a lot of artists do start like with a sketch and I do at times, it just depends what I'm doing. Like if I'm doing something where it's like, you know, a plant, I'm mm -hmm. gonna start with a sketch, but I do like how it like comes together and you end up with something that you would have never thought, like you can look at it later and be like, oh my gosh, I made that, what? You know, it's, it's a good feeling. Yes, it is, starry. How do you know, as an artist, how do you know when a particular piece is finished? Ooh, that's hard. Mm -hmm. um, I usually, like, if it feels right, it's done. Because um, okay. if you keep, like, judging it and changing things and, like, do too much to it, it just feels super tedious and not fun to me. <laughs> so um, it's a surprise and it's fun to see how a picture evolves when you don't start with a plan. Yes, I love that, yes. So I think um, I'm one of those people who have seen, I guess, Hollywood version of what an artist is, will pick up a paintbrush and a blank canvas and <laughs> in a matter of, <laughs> three seconds a full on painting of a of a beautiful woman in, in Rome on the on the one of the bridges out in Rome or Paris or whatever. And I'm like, man, I wish I could do that. Oh my gosh, and that's what makes people not try to do it because you go into it expecting as soon as I start drawing it's going to look perfect and that's not the truth. Mm -hmm it's like building like you don't start with the end product you have to build it so you could be thinking oh my gosh this is terrible and you keep going and then you start to be like wow i love this i did awesome but you have to like get over thinking it's going to look perfect because it's not i i think everybody has their own idea of what creativity is when I first started on Instagram, I designed jewelry. And it was basically a hobby that kind of grew into a business. And I guess like an artist, a type of artist, I didn't understand what direction I wanted to head, what I wanted my pieces to look like. But I found I was inspired by color. Yes. Color inspires me, and every color has a different meaning for me, and every color has a different way of complementing another. Yes. And that's what got me started and really passionate about designing jewelry. Now, I'm the type, I'm a big old burly guy where I like getting my hands dirty and breaking things and just doing manly stuff. But here I am with the tiniest of beads and crystals and wires and I'm trying to, and everybody's looking at me like, what's wrong with this guy? He's going through some midlife crisis or what? 
but I was able to use that energy. Sometimes it was not good energy, but putting it into my creativity and made it something nice. Yes, alchemy. Beautiful. Alchemy at its best. Is right that there. what it's called? Mm -hmm. You take the negative means. and you... That's a good now skill. What, what would you call if you... Well, I, I think I might be going in the wrong direction with this question. And then we'll have you present more art, please. What would you, if you have to give a description of your type of work? What would you oh, call? Oh boy. Hmm. It has evolved. At first, it was legit just me being in a stream, like doing a stream, drawing cartoons of the people who were in the stream. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like big, grand, fine art. Like it was just for fun, you know, like silly pictures, pervy ones, whatever. Um, and it's kind of evolved from that to, uh, I gave away a lot of free art, like people were having a hard time. They would come to me with it. I would be like, okay, what's your address? I'll send you some free art. And it became like a big thing, which is how I can say I'm an international artist because I have art all over the world. Not necessarily because they bought it, but that's fine with me. You know, like I like to put my energy into something and have it be useful to someone else than it just sit here in my house. So that's what it originally was. And then I kind of started making money off it here and there, you know. And um, recently I've started showing my art locally, which was terrifying. Um, but <laughs> it was pretty yeah, cool. I saw, I saw that uh, in one of your posts, uh, I, I trolled your account so I could kind of figure out who Snarky was so I could at least hold a conversation with you. So forgive me for that. But if I'm going to get to know somebody and they have their work put out on like Instagram, I, I want to know about that. I want to know what makes them right. tick. And um, I noticed that you had some um, showing, I think, in your account. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it was. It was. It was scary. I usually don't, even like with this, I wouldn't normally do this ever. Um, usually I'm kind of like keep to myself type of person, but if you want to sell art, you kind of, it's got to be out there. Right. And like I said, it doesn't do me any good sitting here. Um, like somebody could be enjoying it. And well, you know which piece I have my eye on. Wink, wink. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. You know that one is I made for my daughter. It's in her. It hangs in her room. That's so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. I love Ooh, hey, Nars. Okay, I'm gonna show yep. you one. We were talking about alchemy. Here is the elevation of alchemy. Hmm. This one is acrylic. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I like that one. Thank you. I really, my favorite about this is the color of the mountains. I really like how they are. We got little people. I don't know if you can see them. I, I can. It's, it's simple. It's got just a few colors. But right. the message is there. So that this so one, cool. I Go went ahead. into this one with no sketch or anything. It's usually, that's usually what I do, but um, yeah, I really like this one too. This one doesn't get a whole lot of um, attention, but I that's love good. it. <laughs> you, you have like a little description? Is that what I see on the bottom there? Um, yeah, it just says the size. What I used oh, to I make see. it, the name, and the price. That is so cool. 
you know, if you, you're going to be going on a bigger audience than you know soon. So if you want to include how, what kind of medium you're using, plus any prices on it, please, you know, you're welcome to do that. That's what this is for. Oh, okay. You feel comfortable with. Okay. I always feel weird about trying to sell stuff to people oh, forever and always, but. No, we're not selling anything here, but we are sharing. This one's marker. Wow. It's similar to the other one with the mountains, I suppose. Mm hmm so this one's alcohol marker. I had to cheat and look. Now, what's what's the idea about the? I know it says a dip or a valley between the mountains on both. What's the idea behind that? Um, for me, this kind of symbolizes like if you think about how the world is right now, that stuff bubbling under the surface, getting ready to. <laughs> that's kind of what that feels like to me okay. okay I like that one thank you I do a lot of different um, mediums so like this one's charcoal I just oh, like to wow. try everything yeah like a volcano yeah Later, that Mars. So cool. Thank you, Mars, for joining. My, I gotta plug my phone in. Whoa. Yeah, okay. I saw it blink. There we go. I think I got it. So yeah, charcoal is really fun, and it's really like you can even use water and paint with it, which is pretty cool. You can really do whatever with it. You get some charcoal? Yeah. Um, if you, like, let's say you're drawn on a paper with charcoal and you want to add water, it'll make it a little, it'll spread out like watercolor. There we go. Sorry, my phone is like, there we go. I love you charcoal, know, I, too. I, I, in my first year of college here in Hawaii, I took art. It's a requirement. To take art in your first year to build up to get to your major and out of all my classes i had science classes i had one medical class i had history and english and all that great math classes yeah. and the only class i flunked was art yeah i don't i don't know why i thought i drew a great stick man but i basically took a particular professor because I was told that we do drawings of nude models. I was like, yes. As a single college student, I was like, yes. All right. And not knowing that the model was going to be a 72-year-old woman. Oh. Because, yeah. We, they wanted us, or the professor wanted us to draw the wrinkles, the difference of the skin tones and the shadows and all that. And you know what? I didn't understand it then. Josh, welcome back. Welcome in. No, oh my gosh. I don't even understand most of that stuff. I never went to art school or anything. I don't. It's different when someone's telling you what to draw. It's not as fun. Do you think that Going to school to be an artist is kind of uh, puts like this parameters around how creative you can be. Do you think that's true? I think it could be true. I do have friends who have gone to art school. Um, I don't know. I would say that they are more rule oriented than I am. I just, I don't like 
read the directions or like look up how to do it. I just do it. And if it didn't work out, it didn't work out. You learn yeah. from like messing up. So snarky is not a paint by the numbers kit kind of gal <laughs> Yeah. No, I and I like I'm too like with the shadowing and stuff like that. I don't really bother which probably that. would gross people out, like a lot of art school people out, that I don't bother with that. But in my opinion, if I'm going to make art, I want it to be the way I want it to be. If I want to take a picture of something, I will take a picture of something if I want it to be exactly how it is. But I want it to be better or like mm -hmm. more imaginative, something different, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you had to choose. And then we'll have you share more. If you had to choose. At least. We'll say one or two pieces. Which. Would be your favorite. Hmm. Over the. Duration of you. Being an international artist. Being an. Even as simple as, I think at one point you were doing drawings of aliens, which I thought was really cool. I like aliens. Oh I'm very interested in that. Yeah, oh my gosh. If you get me started on aliens, we will never leave. <laughs> well, you're going we to come back. We will be here forever. Tell you what, um, you're going to come back and talk about that. Then. Okay. Yeah. I think maybe the Beatles won. Oh, wow. It's probably one of my favorites. It's huge. It's humongous. That is so cool. That, you got the vibe of the 60s. Right? The type of clothes and the colors that that's used. Oh, man, that's cool. Ancient oh. Aliens, that's my show, Jade. Um, That's probably my favorite one. My other favorite one, I'll have to show you next time because it's in my bedroom. It's like okay, no problem. It. No worries. Next time we'll do a little tour. Okay, we're going to go straight for that piece. There. <laughs> I like that one. Thank you. Yeah, I really... The Beatles was the first band like that I really actually liked. You know when you're a kid and you find that first band and you're like, man, I like music. For me, it was like the Beatles was that. So mm -hmm. they're very special to me. Uh, you're, you're, okay. I don't know if I put, I want to put this politically correct and non offensive. But to me, you seem way younger than I am. So for you to like the Beatles, you probably have a very mature soul. Mature? I don't know. I don't um, want to use the old words. <laughs> I I do tend to like older music and older I don't want to say everything but to me currently in the world that we live in everything is so like temporary and finite and like even people look at each other as temporary and I like I think that's why I like things from the past a little bit more <laughs> Just because there's like a different vibe to it. It's different now. I was stuck yeah, between like, you know, when the people started just having internet in their houses, I was probably like 10. So like I did have a time where I wasn't a part of that. Wow. I like that. My, <laughs> my nephew, who is 14, his favorite group is the Beatles. And he sings Beatles songs all day. He plays Beatles songs on his iPhone and on his guitar. And I hear that all day. And for me, I mean, I wasn't a big fan of the Beatles. I still am not the biggest fan, but I do like the music. I can stand the music, but not eight hours of the Beatles. I, I don't <laughs> think I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes being around my nephew like that, it's like, ah, that's just too much for me. Yeah, you got to have some variety. 
I try to teach him, but he's like, ah, your music's too, it's too difficult. I like techno. My favorite music is techno. He's like, I can't handle that. It's like beating drums, like a, we're we're like in a warrior zone or something. But you know, whatever whatever the case is. Um, I also noticed you did um, some Christmas uh, ornaments. Yeah, I did. you still do those? I do. I still have some. Um, I made those for an event that I went to locally. We set up like a, actually Aubrey was there with me. We set up, set up a little booth with my art in it and it was freezing. It was February. It was really cold, but we sat out there all day and sold little ornaments and art and froze our butts off, but it was fun. Do you find yourself more excited to do a piece now? Or were you more excited about being a piece when you first started out? Oh, I'm always excited. I think like, I don't know. I don't know how you guys experience like your creative like passion, but for me it's like coming at you real quick and if you're not gonna grab it it's going to somebody else so mm -hmm. i'm always like super like oh i gotta get this down you know but i mean there are everybody has their creative blocks too and that that's no fun but <laughs> i think that <laughs> it is it's kind of it feels super important to me you have one of those aha moments when you're like oh wait gotta grab a pen and paper and all right, let's start drawing and sketching it out. Okay, I got the idea. I like that. All right, now I'm going to put a paint to it. You that type of person? That type yeah. Of I usually, my sketches, my, like, if I'm thinking of a painting and I'm doing a sketch, it literally looks like a five-year-old sketched it because I really don't care about what it looks like. I just have to, like, you know, write in what I want to do. And just so I know what it is, it doesn't matter what it looks like, but <laughs> a lot of my sketches are pretty bad. Yeah, but the end result I see is, like, amazing. Thank you. And, uh, and I do like the fact that, I do like the fact that you share that part of you. I think as creators, whether we create art or we create words, you know, or we create, uh, even for tarot readers, the oracle card readers, we have the creative energy that we put into our projects. And when we share that with the world, we put ourselves and make ourselves vulnerable on a platform such as Instagram or Facebook <laughs> or whatever the case is. I mean, I think we open ourselves up for a lot of good, Sometimes some bad. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> you know, but we understand that it shouldn't stop us from continuing to create. And when we continue to create and ignore the negativity, there's a evolution, I think, that we go through. And I think looking at your Instagram from when you first started posting till today, I, I see an evolution of snarky and I want to I want to say I seen I saw an evolution of your work maybe twice from what I can see in your artwork and not saying that the artwork before is better than now or vice versa but every no. piece that you created has a meaning has an intent there was a purpose there was a energy and creativity put behind it so it and may mean something to someone besides yourself right. somewhere. It's going to speak to someone. Yeah. yeah. Did, that make, did that make sense or am I just... No. It really does. But it's like, I feel like when I started being really serious about art, not only my art evolved, but I also as a person evolved with it. 
So like, I'm not who I was when I first started live streaming and making cartoons. Um, not that that was a bad person then, but it does, it has a tendency to kind of expand your mind when you're working with energies like that. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, um, if you have more work to share, would love it. And then maybe at some point when you're ready, we can talk about intuitive painting, I believe you said. I'm really yeah. interested in that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I will cool. share, I don't know. I'll share a couple more and then we can go into it if you want. Absolutely. I can do. Somebody here said they like charcoal, so I'll do this one. It was Ari. A starry guy. She loves charcoal. That's so this charcoal. is charcoal. The stars are just some acrylic paint that I splattered on top of it. Holy smoke. It looks like it's from where I'm sitting. It looks like it could be paint. <laughs> That's time to well, see it. I did paint with it down here. This is what it looks like if you add water. Okay, I remember you saying that. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Thank you. I actually got this put onto a shirt for my aunt because she liked it so much. There's a person standing in the, in the moonlight. Yes. What's the significance of that, if I may ask? Um, to me, I mean, any... Everybody's going to have their own interpretation, which is what I like about art. But when I was making it to me, it was kind of like me pleading to the universe a little bit at the time. Like, oh, so that <laughs> hey, I'm down Holy here. God. I love that. Thank you. I don't know if I... Mm -hmm. I gotta choose wisely take, of what one to pick. Okay. How about take, take your time? We're not in a rush now. Cran, welcome. Grizz, welcome. Grizz, you know Grizz, Jade Tiger, um, sure. Snarky. Forgive me, I'm sorry. She is another one of our moderators, as well as Josh. I think you might have seen them in our group chat. They are also two other uh, moderators as well. So, anyone in the group, anyone in the chat, if you do have questions that you would like to ask, you can ask um, Josh or Grizz, uh, Jay Tiger or Starry Eyed Senses. They can uh, help you with any questions that you might have. Okay? All right, Snarky, I'm sorry about that. Back That's okay. Oh, well, let me, this one's acrylic. This is the Empress. She's in the tarot deck. I figured you guys might like her. That one's fancy. Her hair is very um, detailed. Right. That one's really fancy. Now, do we want us? Do we want to share the price of this one for anybody who might be interested in maybe purchasing that? And guys, Snarky does have a website. Snarky, would you please? Uh, let us know what your website is so people can find out and find your art and find you. Yes, it is snarkyart.net. Cool. Snarkyart.net. Um, not all of these are posted yet because I did have them in the exhibition. But this one is 200 bucks. That one's nice. This is an original. You can always get a print and it's less, but snarkyart.net. Yes. Yep. Thank you, Craig. Thank you so much, Craig. That's nice. Now, have you done an emperor and a knight or a page? I had started doing a tarot deck with a friend of mine, <clears throat> and I took so much time, like, starting to learn about them. Um, sketching out ideas and then she like flaked out on it so i think you, no, i, think you I don't have them all <laughs> i think you yeah, it's just like that. 
so um the one the idea that i had had you know the symbolism for like air water earth they're like the triangle mm -hmm. with the thingies yeah. that's what mine was based on more symbolism i should do it yeah um than intricate pictures but i think learning more about the tarot now that I know about it and like it a lot more, I probably would do something more intricate with it than my original plan. Am I assuming yeah. that you you do read tarot cards as well? Or are you learning about them? You yes. Do? I do read them. I, this is my favorite tarot deck. You want to see? Yeah, of course. I recommend it's really awesome. And what deck is that, please? This is the Tarot of the Abyss. It's fully Tarot black and white. Um, but the art on it is amazing. Let me see. Could pick a card. So we have a few tarot readers, and I hate to use the term incorrectly, but Josh is a tarot reader. Um, Cranwise is also a tarot reader as awesome. well as Ari. So there's a few in here. Ooh, I really love to hear like everyone's different interpretation of the card. It's so cool because everybody has like there's basic guidelines, but then like there's personal meanings for me, anyways. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. About the Three of Pentacles. That's you used really to have unlike... it? Yeah, Josh has, I think he has like a thousand decks or something like that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I don't have that many. <laughs> but um, it's a good deck. I. Who oh, wait? Yes, each deck's different. It has a different energy. You're right. It is. Um, let me see if I can find my favorite one. The Magician in this one's my favorite. You lost everything last year, Josh? What the heck? Oracle decks are pretty nice, too. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to create. I think I, I message you about what I'm trying to create, and I'm, I'm doing research every day, trying to understand the meaning of each card, which I have done my research on that. It's still like, how do I put this card together with this card and make it, have it make sense? Yeah, it takes practice putting them together to, like, make a cohesive story. It really does. Um, yeah. I usually only do readings for myself for that reason, because I can see it in my head better than I can like spit it out of my mouth what it's talking about. You too. Here's my favorite card of this deck. That's the magician? It's the magician. That artwork is amazing. Yeah, I think it's like 20 bucks on Amazon. It's not super expensive. But yeah. yeah, tarot's cool. We could always work on it together. Some of them I still forget what they are too. Yeah, <laughs> I have I've been known, I, I won't. I won't do this to you, but I've been known to put people on the spot. Like when Starry Eyed Senses first joined our our Friday night night, I asked. I think it was a Saturday. I asked her, "I'm going to put you on the spot." would like for you to call in and, and give me a reading. And then I did the same with Josh. And uh, uh, we didn't have time for that, but uh, I'll be honest, uh, when, when I was part of a community where we did uh, do a lot of tarot readings, I was more of a moderator. Oh, um, yeah. For another person. Um, 
I was always afraid to get a tarot reading because I kept thinking, man, they're going to see all the ugly stuff I do every day when they only know this one person, uh, an image of me from Periscope. I don't want them to see the negative stuff that I think of and I, and I talk about and I, all the drinking and the alcohol and the smoking of cigars. I don't want them to see that. But this person helped me to understand it's not that we're there to pry into your life and look at all the negative things in your life. If, if that's what's meant to happen, then it, it'll come out in the message, but it is to help guide you away from that. Right. And once yeah, I understood like, that, what's that? Once I understood that, that it's not all about um, the reader telling the world all your secrets and wearing out all your dirty laundry. It's not about that. It is about how the cards tell a story and offer you guidance. And it's up to you. It's like I think I mentioned it before. Tarot readers are kind of like um, uh, spiritual doctors. We read these cards for you. We give you a prescription. We tell you what needs to get done. And the rest is up to you. If you don't go home and take your medication, guess what? Yeah. You're not going to get better. You're not going to do it. But I have to understand that. I didn't. I kept thinking, man, either I got too many secrets in my closet or uh, either I'm just way negative in real life or something, but it wasn't that. It was just that fear of the not the unknown. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm happy to get a reading now. I don't mind getting a reading because I found that it has helped me a lot, a lot. I never turn away help or guidance anymore. You know. Yeah. So, okay. Back to you. Well, since we're talking about this, we could touch on the intuitive art. It doesn't have to be painting. It could be anything. Sure. It could be a piece of paper yep. and a pen. Um, okay. But I got mine. Most of the people in here are probably going to already kind of like do this stuff anyways. If you're a tarot reader, etc., you work with energy. You want to clear out your energy before you're going to start to do intuitive art because you're going to ask your higher self to show you something. Um, so however you clear your energy, you can meditate, light a candle, get some selenite or something. Um, however you do that. You would just kind of connect with your own self. And like, once you get to that quiet place, just ask your higher self to be with you and to help you see what you need to see through your own hands. Um, and then you can, sometimes I'll draw a couple tarot cards, um, charms. Like I have a little thing of like charms, like, yin yang and the infinity symbol and stuff where you like pick through it and pick them out um and then kind of just use that as your inspiration as you're starting your art so like if you're if you chose the magician and you wanted to include him in your intuitive art you'd be like maybe working with some manifestation maybe drawing some things you'd like to manifest in your life or while you're doing the art thinking about how can I um, manifest these things into my life? What would it feel like if I already had this thing in my life? And really feel that feeling and then you can start to draw. But I wouldn't expect it to look like a masterpiece. If that's not the point of it. You know what I mean? It's kind of like... Mm -hmm. It's kind of like doing your own tarot read for yourself. It's your higher self saying, hey, th these are the things that we should be paying attention to, maybe. Um, maybe we should change these things. Maybe we should remember that there's hope and these things are coming up. Um, it's really like kind of like a personal thing. I have done it for other people before. 
but I usually like talk to them for a week or two daily to like get to know them first mm -hmm. because it's like a little harder to do it for somebody else than to talk to your own higher self. Right. That's interesting. So, okay, I can see how we can do it for ourselves. Like, I meditate. I try to meditate at least twice a day. For me, I need it because I'm very empathic. I can absorb a lot of energy. At the end of the day, before I lay my head down, I try to meditate and send out all these energies that are not mine because they just jumble my head up with a lot of nonsense that don't belong to me. So I try and send it back during that meditation. With that, that's my intent when I meditate. Anyway. And then, I like of course, that. I set up my boundaries. I never used to do that before. And oh man, I, my head used to be full of stuff that wasn't mine. And some thoughts weren't the best thoughts. And it just messed me up. It can be scary, yeah. Oh, yeah. Being psychic as well and having all these other energies that are coming at me or have, have been a part of me all day that I've attracted unknowingly. Yeah. Man, it was just, it was a nightmare. It was just a shit show. I didn't like it. I've, I've had to learn the hard way how to set boundaries, how to meditate, send back these energies that are not mine, and recall my own energies. Because at the end of the day, my cup is empty. And that's no you know? good. Yeah. So I give out, I give out, I give out. I forget to recall. So I do that every night. I recall yeah. all my energies back. It's like I'm really glad. I'm really glad you so, do that because if you're an empath, all of the energy vampires are going to come for you. They are. They are. And, and sadly, some of them are within my own family. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's totally cool. I have my boundaries up. There are, there are people in my family I know to stay away from, and I keep them away from me for a reason. They don't understand why. They just think I'm just I'm too stuck up. I'm too, I'm too good for them. My nose is in the air. I know it has nothing to do with that. It's because your energy is way too negative. And when I come in with my energy, you want to suck the life out of me. I'm sorry. Not going to happen. Oh my gosh, Jade, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. not intentionally usually, but yes. Are you empath an empath as well? Do you feel others' energies as well? Yeah, I learned the hard way too about that. Um, I gave away my energy most of my life. All of it. <laughs> I, I think we do that with good intention, but un unknowingly um, finding out later, I guess, in life that all that draining and, and, and loss that can't be recalled maybe in the later day, the later time, it just, it takes a part of our, our souls maybe. I don't know. I know what you mean. It feels really, like, do you... Do you know anything about Harry Potter? Like those things that like mm -hmm. suck out your soul? It's like that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I, I actually met another person on Instagram. And I have to back up just a little bit. I am, or I have been the last several years, the most the hermit type person you'll ever meet were uh, because of a past trauma, I have difficulty talking to other people. I have difficulty talking to people of the other gender, of the opposite gender. So for me to even reach out to you, kind of took a lot for me to do that. Well, but I'm glad you did. So am I. So am I. Um, but there's like my one of my longest friends in here is Jay Tiger Grizz. We've known each other for two, maybe three years now. We've gone through a lot, her and I, both up and down 
in our own lives. But when I first reached out to you, I was like, man, I'm nervous. I don't know what she's going to think or what she's going to say with all the bullshit that goes around in the world and, and men uh, direct messaging us, women. I don't want them to get the wrong idea. Oh my gosh, I usually um, ignore it too. Yeah, but I didn't. Something told me not to. Yeah. So, that's um, great. I, I have reached out to six different creators on Instagram, and they are all women of different ages. And it's nerve-wracking for me to send a message, but I send almost the same type of message to them as I did to you. Say, this is me. This is what I am trying to do. I would really like it if we could talk and maybe you can share a little bit of, you know, what you believe, what you do. So there is this woman called Layla, the healer. She um, had a post about soul retrieval. Hmm. And basically what that is, is um, I, I offered her a spot to come and be a guest presenter like yourself. And forgive me for bringing this in in your time. But while we're on the topic, uh, her belief is because of past traumas that we all go through, the person that we or that's caused the trauma takes a bit of our souls with them. I never thought about that. Yeah, I never thought of that before. So her, with her practice, her gift is helping you as the person, the client, to retrieve that part of your soul. So I guess it's possible. And if you can retrieve a part of your soul, why can't you retrieve your energy from 10, 12, 15 years ago? Oh, you can. Energy never dies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. I feel Could like I've seen... I feel like I've seen Jade around Periscope in the past. She has. She has been. And you see her on group chat. She's Jade Tiger. Yeah. Riz, will you do me a favor? Will you type in uh, Snarky's website for us in chat? Now, what else would you like to share with us? Hmm. I have more art or if anybody has any questions. Okay, if you want to open up the questions, we can. Uh, if anyone in the chat has uh, Kelly Scope. Oh, yeah, I don't know if you were ever in Kelly Scope. If you, you have any questions you'd like to ask or call in and, and talk to Snarky yourself, you're welcome to do that. SnarkyArt.net. Thank you, Josh. I thank appreciate you. That. Now, all of the art you said that, uh, thank you, um, Grizz, that you showed and shared with us tonight. I really would love for you to come back and, and share more with us. If, if it's something that you're led to do as far as the tarot or more art or actually creating a piece for us live. I can do that. You feel like you, that. I think that would be the coolest thing. Yeah, I definitely um, have a setup because I stream on Twitch creating art. So I do have a setup where I could do that. And thank you. Please, please um, share your Twitch channel with us. Or your, what is it called? Twitch, Twitch profile? Yeah, it's um, Purdy Nerdy instead of Purdy Snarky. Purdy Nerdy. Purdy with a U, right? Yeah. P R U D Y N E R D Y. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to go find you. Josh Please. says your website is beautiful. Thank you, Josh. Your question was Do I. Um, do you stream to Twitch or no? I did a couple of times and I felt, I felt like the underdressed student at a prom. With Bermuda shorts and a low shirt. Oh no! <laughs> and everybody else, everybody else was wearing a tuxedo and a prom dress. My my setup is simple, as you can see. I'm not here to to impress anybody. I'm here because I have a a work I want to create, 
I have met people like yourself, like Grizz, Josh, and Ari, and MJ, who is another moderator, and Cran, that wants to create a community, a community that, um, oh, Starry's going to be. Good night, Starry. Good night. Good night, Bowie. She has a little rabbit called Bowie. Nah. A little bunny. Spoiled bunny, by the way. He's spoiled bunny. But Thank you for watching it. Star is actually a, an artist as well. I will have to follow Starry. Yes, please. Please. Jade, my name is Cindy. <laughs> In real life, anyway. Oh, oh, it's out there. Okay, it's out there. We can't take it back now. It's out there. Yep. We'll, we'll just edit this out. We'll edit that out. <laughs> we'll bleep it out. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, I think... Um, when we were back in Periscope, uh, I started like the first year Periscope came up. I was very nervous. I was at the lowest point in my life uh, uh, with confidence. I didn't have all that confidence, but I thought if I did stream, it might help me get confidence. The only thing that helped me to get confidence was the whiskey in my hand and the cigar in the other hand. And we did drunken trivia, and it was fun as hell. And sometimes it was just so rowdy, and I would have like 300 people in the room at once, and no moderator, and half a bottle of whiskey down, and I miss a lot of comments. But it was fun, <laughs> and that was a different me. Yeah, you know, I I still, I still always make sure I have a bottle of whiskey with me, not sponsored, but. <laughs> I make sure I have one with me. And it's basically just at the end of the day, at the end of a very long day, I just like to sit down and relax. I love to watch the moon at night. There's so much energy that she gives off that I can sit there at night and I, I drink and listen to my, my music and it's just, it's beautiful. It's one of my favorite times of the night is just sitting or watching the moon. Love wow, it. we have that in common then. I don't, I prefer to smoke marijuana than drink, but we definitely have the moon thing in common. Yeah, I, I think people are missing out by not doing that. Mm -hmm. I think they're really missing out. That's why that moon piece that you showed me, I thought that would be very, very pretty. That was beautiful. Thank you. It really spoke to me. So, can we talk about that one piece that's hanging in your daughter's room then? Because that's yes. just it. I, I, I'll have to say this much. The reason why that hit me, and I think I said, I told you a little bit about why it spoke to me, but it's something that I am so drawn to that it is now my screensaver. That's so, great. I don't know. If I don't know if I owe you royalties for that, but uh, it's like my screensaver is going to stay. Did I tell you what that one's made out of? Mm, I, that's what I wanted to talk about. That's what I wanted to ask you. Do you mind sharing that? Um, you don't have to go get it. You don't have to go get it. Okay. Well, I wanted to show you what it's made out of, though. Hey, it's this, little... is what I think, this, this is what I think it was, because I tried to... I try to, you know, you, you when you widen the picture and look at it, say, she made this out of that that kit you see on Saturday cartoons where you get the little bubble and you bloop, 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 bloop. I was like, that's pretty cool, but how'd you get all these different colors? So, here. Am I close? Am I close? They're like little diamonds. Diamonds? Like, not actual diamonds, but here, let me. Each, stones. They're stones. You see how tiny they are? Yeah, I see them. That's what it's made out of. So, for example, here I have, I did one of the Mona Lisa. Holy. And, uh, see? Man. That's beautiful. But it's all little tiny. Damn, <laughs> Thank <beautiful>. you. 
but wow. yeah, they were, they're pretty awesome. How long did it take for you to make that one? Well, because there's some think... accuracy, there's some accuracy involved, so you probably had to take longer on this one than you did on the piece that we're about to talk about. Yeah, um, this one, probably about a month. <sighs> a month. At working on it, like, almost every day, because you have to, like, put each little thing... Is it on a backing of some sort? Do you buy like a certain type of mat that has divots in it where you can put the diamonds? Yeah, on so there? like okay. if you you can go on Amazon actually and send in any picture and they'll print it on like a sticky piece of paper. Got and it. then you stick you stick each little thing on it. <laughs> and then you get that. That is beautiful. Thank you. And it's so clear, too. You can see the image. Here's one that I started over hat, but it's not finished. See? Okay, I saw, I saw that in your Instagram that you're a cat person. But that's what they look like before you stick the little things to it. Got it. Got so... It. Pretty neat. So, uh, so on your Instagram, I saw that you're you are a cat person. Yeah, how many cats do you own? Two. Okay, that's fair enough. Two is more than enough, right? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> one of them is my daughter's. One's mine. The other one basically lives in her room. She's always just in her room. But I have an orange cat. And I am slightly obsessed with orange cats. Just a little. Because of the color? Because of the temperament of orange cats. Oh. It's super different than really? other cats. I didn't yeah. know that. Um, they're more friendly. And um, I don't know, more personable, like. You know how some cats are kind of standoffish? Orange cats usually, not always, but usually aren't like that. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know uh, that the color of the cat's fur, I wouldn't want to say dictates their personality, but it tells a lot about their traits. Yeah. Um, and most orange cats are male. I'm mind blown right now. I didn't know that. Yep. I'm a I'm a dog person and I <laughs> I think we've owned dog I wanna say like twenty dogs in my lifetime. But for me it's like you guys are a deep dogs are a dumb you're taking my slippers, you're biting up all the rubbish bags. No. And that's how we grew up. But I didn't understand that. I guess I guess it's true because they have their own energy as well. Yes. So it would make sense that they also have their own personality as well. Cat, yeah, cats and dogs are super different, but I feel like all animals and plants, mm -hmm. like each different one has its own energy and it's just so interesting. Like, and such a blessing to be able to like exchange it with them. I love animals, they're great. You mentioned plants. I am working with an herbalist who is going to come on and present uh, different types of plants and herbs and their origins or what they use for. Um, and it's actually a local person. So I think every culture has someone who works with herbs and uh, plants and understands different meanings of each plant and here in Hawaii, we're very, because we're a little island in the middle of the ocean, little rock, uh, it was actually um, limited to the type of plants we had here in Hawaii, native plants. But it's funny how the native plants we had was used to heal almost any type of ailment that mankind has. 
Isn't that awesome? And we're a little tiny rock in the middle of the ocean. Grown from lava. You know, yeah. How, how is that possible? There has to be a, a higher being uh, out there in the universe that says, all right, we're going to put Hawaii here. And let's just throw all these herbs at them because they're going to need it for the headaches and the, the cramping and the the uh, pregnancies. And all. we just throw all these with them and leave it there. And there is a lot of um, work and research put behind understanding plants. I didn't understand how deep it goes. Oh, yeah. There's one person in here, Cranwise, who is kind of like a plant person. I don't know what the right word is, but she'll understand what I'm talking about. So I know she's still in here. So I wanted to ask you a question because I'm looking at my notes. I made three-page notes. Oh, my gosh. When I was from here out. See? I make a lot of notes. Just so you nice. Know. So... I want to be able to hold a conversation with someone when we're, as especially a guest presenter. But I noticed there was a theme running through a lot of your work, and I still see it in the evolution of your work as well. And the theme is still kind of there. It's, it's kind of like, where's Waldo? It's hidden in your work. You know what I'm talking about? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, I'm going to say you showed two pieces tonight that had that theme in it. One was done in charcoal. The other one was done in acrylic. And the I, eyes? When I, the eye. The single eye. Not two eye. The single eye. Yes. I noticed that in your work and I was scrolling through and I, I started up whoa, wait a minute, there's, there's something in common with all these pictures. My problem is this brain has been trained over years of being a corporate trainer to look for the little details. I get stuck on that sometimes, so I got to back up <laughs> and look at the truth. <laughs> but as I was trolling her account, I was like, that's pretty cool. Even, if, even when her work, the type of art you were doing, and your picture started to evolve into something more brilliant with more color. That once one little thing stayed with you, there was that little eye, that one single eye in your artwork. May I ask, or is it a secret what the reasoning behind that is? Oh man, I mean, I guess it's not a secret. To me, the eye always feels right to put there. I don't know if I like strive to put it there, but it when it comes out, I say, okay, you're there. Um, I don't know. My dad told me that he thought it was like the all seeing eye. Um, but that I, had a different connotation to it. it yeah, I don't. Personally, I would say it's a little deeper than that for me. I don't know how to really put it into words. Hmm. Possibly like my higher self, but probably something outside of myself, which most of my art, I would give the credit to something outside of myself than me. Josh said your necklace is an eye. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. So That's my ring. That's so cool. <laughs> that I, I think maybe perhaps that eye is validation for you at some point that someone out there is really paying attention to your work. That could Maybe be. Maybe that's what it could be. And I'll admit, I'm one of those that have paid attention to your work. Well, thank I've you. I've studied your work the last couple of weeks. 
A I lot of people don't it. look that closely. Yeah, like I said, sometimes I get stuck. So I have to be reminded to step back, look at the whole picture, and not to try and guess or understand what the message that you are trying to express with your art, but to actually instead enjoy the creativity and the energy of which it was put into it. And I found that when I started doing that, I really enjoyed the work. I love that. I really enjoyed what you're doing. I don't want to. I'm glad that it comes yeah. through. It did for me. I can say that much. But it took me a step back first. Yeah. Because at first I was like, man, okay, she likes aliens. Okay, all right, right, right down. She likes. She's a cat person. <laughs> Okay, yeah, okay, she does a lot of it. We're going to talk about that in another one. Um, another, you know, present that again, if I may ask. And then I started looking and I stopped. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I might be looking at this all wrong. Because if I was an artist, I don't want somebody to look at my, my work and go, all right, I think I get what he's trying to say. I don't want you to guess. I just, I didn't create this piece. For you to guess my intent or my emotion or my mood or my energy. I created it because I wanted you to experience the same joy I had putting into this. Mm -hmm. And you might look at this picture and see something totally different than what I do. And it's okay because we all have our own perspectives. And if you see something different but it calls out to you, speaks out to you, that's what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I. That's what's so awesome what about think. art. Yeah, I think part of it is we all have to understand and embrace our creativity, our creative side. We all have it, just like yes. intuition. We all have it, but if we don't embrace it, if we don't understand it, then it's for naught. It's like right. even the Bible says that. When we are as believers, we are given certain gifts, like the gift of discernment, the gift of prayer, being a prayer warrior for people in your family, your group. And if we do not use these gifts, it will be taken away. So it's just like creativity. It's just like being an artist, whether you paint or create um, metalwork or uh, design jewelry. Or even like lately, I've been kind of getting into words. I've been yeah. kind of writing a lot of poems. I wrote one a couple of days ago about the heart. I know you don't scroll to Instagram, but I would like to ask maybe if you go back and look back at my post, it has a little blue heart on it. And it was a letter I wrote to myself. And it was after a conversation, a very difficult conversation I had with my oldest son. And I was inspired, kind of like how you get inspired to do some of your work. I was inspired to write that that letter, almost like a poem. Oh, I can't when, wait to read I, it. When I read it to my oldest son, he's like, "Dad, I don't, I don't know this side of you. You're always this big old tough guy. Do this manly stuff. Boys don't cry." I said, "You know what? I'm wrong. I'm wrong." Boys don't cry, maybe no. Men cry. Men yeah. Men cry. There's a difference. That's hard. A lot of a lot of men I feel like are not okay with feeling how they feel. I think it's I think society. a lot of it is it's society. I think it's upbringing. I think it's also our family background. Because there's certain, like the Chinese, I have Chinese in my blood. So the Chinese people, they are one that can never say, I love you. Oh. I grew up in a household with Chinese parents that never said those words. Never uttered it. So huh. it's, it's foreign to me. And I had to learn a lot and grow a lot when I became a parent. And I make sure I tell my sons every chance I get, I love you. 
I may fail, I may slum, I may fall, I may disappoint you, I may even hurt you, but uh, I love you. I want you to remember that. You know. So, anyway, this is, wasn't about me. I don't know how we got on that. That's be that's so to, beautiful. You're supposed to point me back in the right direction. No, I wanted to hear it. <laughs> 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 oh, we are making friends, anyway, right? Yeah, that's so beautiful. I really, I'm really glad that you guys had that moment because that's really beautiful. It was a long time coming for my son. Again. He's he's 21. He's in this last year of college, and I think that was the one thing he needed before he went off and lived his own life, so to speak. He needed that validation. He needed that recognition. He needed to know that, man, I, I do, I, I, uh, I don't want to get emotional. It's, boys don't cry. <laughs> he, uh, he needed to hear certain words come out of my mouth. Yeah. Before he could say, "I'm I'm ready to move on." It is a cultural thing. Yeah, you're right, Grace. You're right. So let me ask you, Darky. Do you, you uh, probably putting you on the spot on this, but do you have any questions for me that you might uh, want to ask that I don't think I maybe shared? Is there any questions you have for me? And, I want to know book. what is your favorite band of all time? Oh, <laughs> I, if I say it, nobody in the room is going to believe it. I will tell you, since you asked, okay. I will tell you. My favorite type of music is techno. Love that. I love that boom, 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 boom. The repetitive beat. I love that. Just gets me going. Yeah. But my favorite group of all time is Nine Inch Nails. Not Journey. Oh, nice. Nine Inch Nails. Journey. That's a good one. <laughs> Journey's a good band. It is a good band. But Nine Inch Nails, I, I didn't think I would like that type of music. I, I used to work for a resort on another island where I met a couple groups. One of them was Metallica. And when I found that the type of music they played, it was like, ah, uh ah, -uh, that's not for me. No way. I don't like the music. Well, guess what? I, I, I like uh, Metallica. I like Black Sabbath. I like um, Van Halen. But my favorite group of all time Right now, if you hear that, and you like you asked, it's nine inch now. I love that. I love That's their, a big band. I love their energy. Yeah, they're they got good energy. They have a little and, dark side to them, but yeah, so do I. Ooh, I think we all have that, mm -hmm. but I love their energy. Definitely. So, this is what I'm feeling, and I don't know if you're open for it. I don't want to keep you longer than I need to, so you tell me when it's time to. Because it's late for you. I do have this feeling that Josh, Josh, if you're hearing me, I do have this feeling like maybe Josh would like to talk to you. Josh is one of the people in our group. Josh, am I right, Josh? Am I feeling that correctly? Could be wrong. I know he's here. Josh, by the way, I'll, I'll tell you, Smarty, I met Josh um, in. Uh, Periscope once or twice, and I didn't. My mind was so small then. I didn't like his energy then. I thought he was just too sarcastic. I didn't like him. I met him again to the same person who is on TikTok now, and I invited her here. And she was one of our first guest readers. And Josh was here with her, and I, I was like, yeah, I don't. I don't remember him. I don't like this guy. <laughs> and it was so funny. You missed a bit. Josh, did you want to call in? But 
I admitted to him on one of our Saturday nights, we do a three plus me thing where it's casual. Friday nights is a little bit more formal. We try and do a little bit more of presenting of the future guests like yourself. Um, do a lot of sharing. Friday, uh, Saturday nights is more three plus me where we just chit chat, bullshit, and play games and all that. And I message you that. But Josh, I have to tell him that I was so wrong about this guy. He's one of the most amazing young men I've met in a very, very long time. Oh, let's see. Go ahead, Josh. I just have this feeling like he wants to call in. If he wants to call in, that's okay. Hello. Hey, Josh. Hey. I definitely feel it does. Sorry, buddy. Thank you, Bruno. Ah, Jay Tiger. <laughs> So now you can put a face to the name JJ Boyer, right next I think. To me, yeah. Cindy. I'm Josh. Hey, I Josh. actually, when you were talking about doing like the channeled art, I took a minute and I did a little art myself. Nice. <laughs> if you want to see, this is supposed to be like a solar eclipse, very shining bright out the way. And then I saw a tree on top of a bunch of rocks. I someone standing at a pier with a snake around them. And there's a fire. Oh, wow. That's all I got. My drawing is horrendous. <laughs> but you don't have to I worry about see. that. Do you feel any sort of way about it? Um, I feel uh, like a pull, like a, a reaching for something from it. Like there's um, a longing. That just uh, is in sight, but not quite in reach. Mm. But it's definitely, I mean, it's got like some duality in it. It's got some stuff that was just interesting to me personally um, that popped in. Like got flashes. I don't know. But you inspired me. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to try that. I haven't. I'm not much of an artist or like a channeler in that way as much. So I was like, I want to give it a try. <laughs> the thing that stood out to me the most was the solar eclipse sun in the middle. It reminded me of the sun card in tarot of like clarity. Yes. Like that's the thing that's sticking to me the most is the clarity. That's exactly what I was seeing too. Validation right there, Josh. Validation. Hmm. I love this. I love this. Yeah, you're right, uh, Grizz. There are a lot of artists in here tonight. So I came in a little late. I had a little errand to run last minute. Um, so I didn't get to hear like your intro or like how you guys met. Us two? You mean... Randomly? Random. <laughs> so what I did, Josh, I'll tell you how it happened. Mm -hmm. she came up as a suggestion and I said alright so every once in a while I'll pop open the profile and look and I saw she was an artist I was like wow this is pretty cool and then I saw we didn't talk about this Snarky or Cindy there was this one piece she did and it was a piece of a dream I had about Kelly and it was a I, I want I want her to share it, but we don't have to do it tonight. But it was a particular piece that was an exact uh, representation of a dream I had about Kelly. And basically, since she's not here, I'm just going to say this: it was a dream about her having different color umbrellas, holding them one at a time. And throughout my dream, one umbrella would drop, and she'd pick up another color. And then one, she's walking down this path, and then another, that umbrella would drop, she'd pick up another color. She went through four different colors. And at the end, she picked up one black umbrella and walked down the path alone. So these four different color umbrellas represented four different relationships or connections in her life that she had, and it ended. 
and Cindy did a piece with those little diamonds being so intricate and being perfectly placed and with the intent of creating this piece, it really stood out to me. It grabbed me by the throat and said, look at this picture. And I was fascinated. And I, I said, okay, I, my, my gut said, you need to talk to this, this woman. You need to talk to this artist. And me, being the kind of guy in the last few years where it's difficult for me to say, hey, I like your work. Or even in another situation, hey, I think you're cute. You want to go out? I have difficulty with that sometimes. But I put on my big boy underwear and said, I'm going a, I'm to a message her. And she is still messaging me back because I'm a, I'm a single guy messaging a, a married woman. And like she's going to say, no, I don't want any of those eggplant pictures. Well, no, that's not what I want. <laughs> so you asked, John, you got the full story. That is the full story. That's great. <laughs> And, the, and I think the connection was uh, something that the universe put in front of me. And I needed to take that step out in faith. Just like how Grizz was brought into my life. Just like how Ari was brought into my life. Just how Josh was brought into my life. I needed to take that step out. Put in the big boy underwear and go, all right, I'm here to I'm here to speak. I'm here to talk. It was meant to be. Yeah. Because, like I said, I don't answer just anybody because I do get a lot of that stuff. <laughs> so, oh, like, that's something why, told that's me, why like, mean. hey, hey, this person's okay. Oh, hi, chip taker. Um, something told me that you were okay. And something pushed me to do it where... I'm not the type of person that would be sitting here talking to a bunch of people in someone else's live stream. I usually would not do that. <laughs> so, and, and you know what? For that, I, I am truly grateful. I appreciate you even taking the time off to reply. Uh, when I did send you that initial message, I wanted to make sure I put good energy into that message because I wanted you to feel that good energy and my intention. There's people in here now like Josh and Grizz and Ari and now yourself, Snarky, that know exactly who I am, what I'm trying to create, and I can't do it alone. I know that much. It takes everybody to input and help to grow this community. And even if um, I think you had your friend uh, Trippy Tarot, I would really love to connect with, I believe it's a he? Did I understand that correctly? I'm not sure. But Who? would love it if Trippy Tarot, 420? Oh, um, a they. They, okay, they. I'm sorry, forgive me. Um, but I, I want to be able to have a safe place for all of us who are creators to land and say, Hey, can I share with the community what I do? Absolutely. Can I bring, yeah. and we talked about this last week, can I bring my sharings to the potluck table tonight? By all means, please do. Yeah. I think it's important. I think because of the way the, the pandemic went and because of quarantine and everybody locked up in their own houses and because of... Um, Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. And because of uh, um, technology, I think humans have really forgotten the art of one-to-one -one communication to oh verbally gosh, yes. talk to each other and connect and not connect through texting or DM or even something like this. But it can't be helped because this is how we, we're going to use the tools we have to connect. But I think We've forgotten as a society how to communicate with each other. I agree. Yeah. Um, so can I, think... I can I ask any thoughts uh, you might have, um, Cindy? 
I was just thinking that what you were talking about is probably why I drew the Three of Pentacles earlier. Okay. Community, teamwork. It just made me think of that. Nothing happens by coincidence. Everything has an intent and a purpose. I agree. And every purpose is driven. That is my mantra. I think I've said this now a few dreams. Nothing happens by coincidence. Everything has an intent. Every intent has a purpose. And every purpose is driven. Yes. Yeah. That's cool how it all came together. It all got wrapped up in this really nice package about just what you said, drawing with your pentacles. Yeah. It is pretty cool. Before before we end with uh, your segment, you're welcome to stay, of course. I know it's, it's late where you are, but please share with us any information that you would like to include in your uh, social media that you would like to share, your Twitch, also um, your website with us. This is your time to just market yourself because no, trust God. me, this video will end up and we'll discuss this off stream, but it will end up hopefully, hopefully in a bigger market than just here tonight. Well, um, my website, snarkyart.net, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, all my social media is down there linked. All you got to do is click it. The only one I don't have on there is TikTok. And I think my name on there is Purdy Snarky, but I'm not positive. I'll have to message you and let you know. But um, things coming up, I'm going to be adding some of the stuff I've shown back onto my store. Um, I'm going to be probably taking off the Christmas decorations for now. Um, I am also thinking of adding a way to book a session for an intuitive piece to my website. That's I'm nice really story. nervous about that, and that's why I haven't done it yet. I'm super nervous about it, but I'm thinking about it, and I think in the future I will add that. I say Nike yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I support that for you. Yeah, I think it would be really cool. Um, I used to have a something similar which I called like art therapy where people could book sessions I gotta say that a lot of it was like just pervs um so I kind of didn't do that but I can with this it's kind of more like concrete like okay this is what we're going to be doing and it should be better so that's pretty cool other stuff coming up, I don't know. Next year, I'm going to be doing, like, an art trail, which is in this area, which is New York. Um, there's probably, like, 500 artists, and you can get, you can buy a map, and you can go to each of their studios on a Saturday and just drive to each studio and visit with each artist. So that is, like, a year in the future. That's in a while, but that's a local thing. Where in New York are you? Um, I'm in upstate New York. Okay, I used to live in Watertown. Oh, that's not super far away. Yeah, I'm in Connecticut right now. Oh, nice. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've, I've heard of the state. I just don't know where that all these places are. <laughs> I'm in the Little Rock in the middle of the ocean. Oh, I, I have been to New York once. But it was as a tourist, so I don't see the New York that New York is known. I don't live in the city either. I live way out in the country, up on top Every of a mountain. It's like a whole other world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I yeah. hear. It's more, um, it's more farm life. It's more. Um, a lot of maybe? old country roads that are super beautiful to drive in in the fall too. Mm hmm. Do you know where Ithaca is? Yeah, I have a couple of friends who go to Ithaca. Oh, sweet. Well, that's where, like, I usually, stores down there put their art, my art in their stores down there sometimes. Okay. I'm going to have to make a trip. Ithaca, isn't that that north, south 
east-westing Ithaca. No, that's an isthmus. Sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm stupid. I'm sorry. That's an isthmus. <laughs> no, you're not. It's, that's no, a, I was looking at your website, and your art is truly amazing. I can definitely like right? feel through your art, which is like something that's hard to find in modern artists nowadays. Well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I was probably to making a purchase really too. Well. I used to be a chef. I used to do food for art, and then I got hurt, and now I have to do it on paper. So. That's I my origin story with that. What? I was a food and beverage manager for about 12 years. Oh, nice. Loved it. I, can't, I couldn't get that out of my blood. Yeah. it's. I loved it too, but I hurt my back at work and I can't really do that anymore. I know the feeling. I can't lift up 500... I, town people anymore <laughs> yeah no it's it definitely takes a toll and like the older you get the worse it gets like when you first get the job and you're super young you're like oh whatever and then it's like oh right. my god i'm an elder in my 20s but next year i'll be a baby in my 30s <laughs> <laughs> there you go Man, well you're I, I'm younger than tell me you how old I am. I'm 37. All, all y'all. You're not. All y'all I'm 37. I would have been like 31 at the most. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Edit, editor, edit that age out. Okay, we're good now. We're good now. <clears throat> bleep, bleep her age out and her, add her, add her real name, please. Thank you. Edit out the cackle, too, please. Right. No, oh, no, leave the... Leave the cackle in. That's fun. We're going to edit Where's out her the... age and her real name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys are all younger than me. Every single one of you all younger than me. Yeah, but... You're, you're as young as you feel. Yeah. I yeah, mean, my mind, yeah, yeah. my body, and, like, my emotions are all three completely different ages. <laughs> right? Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. I, 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 Google I, Gaga. I, I, Google Gaga. You are a I baby. Trippy Tao, you and I will have a conversation for sure. I like I like your energy. I'm super excited it, you came on today. So am I. It's wonderful getting to know you. You've been like an awesome guest. Well, thank you. And I feel weird because you're sitting over there with three pages of like notes and I have nothing. I was just like, whatever. <laughs> no, hey, wait a minute. This, that, I, I kind of think that this is my job. If I'm going right. to have someone on as a guest, I should know something about them. That's fair, yeah. Because in the conversation, I can draw from that, hey, so I see you like aliens. Hey, I see you have this one painting that I really like. I, I see this one theme occurring. And you were talking about this earlier, and so were we talking about it earlier. You were talking about how the things that are coming up for you that you were sharing just now. And you know the word I heard in my brain? And this big old fat head of mine? What? Evolution. Evolution. Mm -hmm. You're going through another evolution. Yeah. And maybe this was, this was your step up point of saying, you know what? I can. I want to do this. I want to get on live. I want to try a different platform. I want to be with a different community. I want to share things that I can't share on Twitch. I want to share things that I don't share on Instagram. I want to be in an intimate group like we have here and say, tonight, guys, this is what we're going to do. Because eventually, me, I might still be the face, but the host one week could be Josh. The next week, it could be Ari. One week could be Grizz. One week it could be you. Because then it is really a community. Yeah. It's not just about it's not just about me. This is a growing growing thing for me too. It's growth for me too. I appreciate but that I believe... though, because like the sense of community on Periscope for those of you who were there. Yeah. You can't find that anywhere else. 
Twitch, no. Nope. Nope. Here, no. And I really appreciate that you're trying to like do that. <laughs> Well, you know, there's what? a little bit of it on TikTok, but then there's also like bots that come in all the time, so it kind of like ripples the energy. Yeah. I I ask <laughs> I ask myself, where do I want to put myself back on the internet? I don't want to do TikTok. I didn't want to do Twitter. I tried a couple of other apps that from that are from China, and it didn't sit well with me. China. Yeah, China. But you, China. but you have to audition for it. Oh, oh! And I think I, I know what you're talking about. I, I didn't feel like I had to go audition for somebody to accept me and what I wanted to present to the world and say, okay, we'll let you use it. We'll let you come on tour. You know, keep your app. I don't need your app. I'm not here was for it, the numbers. Was it live it? Uh, it was live me. Live me. Oh, I haven't heard that one. Honestly, like, though, like, like for me. what for what you're doing here, Instagram probably is the best platform because I mean, you can go live from nothing. You can have a bunch of people in your live all at once on video. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, it's it's an easy way for like people to just hop on. Yeah. Yeah, I you I think really I was looking, platforms. and I've been wanting to do this for two years now, and I finally got the balls to say I'm starting. So with that, Grizz, will you please call in? Grizz is going to do an oracle card reading for our collective for the people in the room. Snarky, if you'd like to be a part of it, that, that would be great. And Josh, if you are led to give a reading tonight, you're welcome to do so. We can uh, let Snarky go because I know it's late. I know it's late for you, Josh, but I know you're a night owl. Mm -hmm. I probably will stay, but I also don't know how to hang up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so wait. So it should just be the so little that's a good thing, in the top though. corner. Oh, so, okay. But, but that's a good thing. That's will a good thing, though. you tell me when I should push it, okay? <laughs> yeah. Um, editor, we're going to edit that out as well. <laughs> we're not going to have to push anything. But Roger that, over. Let's uh, let's uh, let's talk about the tomorrow. So tomorrow is usually a day when I do a three plus me. It's kind of like this. Now that we're finished with the formal part of our presentation tonight, let me just say this: I am so grateful to you for taking the time out tonight, as late as it is, taking time away from your family. Um, I would like for you to please thank your family for me, because for me, family is important. They also have to make that sacrifice of having time away from mom, having time away from the missus, to spend time with total strangers who are not here to show you eggplant pictures. We are here to try and come across as, <laughs> we're going to edit that out to editor, please, thank you. Um, we want to share and create this community that I think a lot of people have been wanting and looking for in a long time. And like I said, I'm not here for the numbers. I'm here for the people. If I have 10 people in our lives every week, but they bring their full selves and commitment and their energies and want to participate in the community, that's it. But honestly, I've been asking for this. I've been praying about it. I've been asking the universe, and I'm finally manifesting it. And it's, things are coming my way that I never thought I could do. People have been put in my life, like Josh, and now like you, Cindy, that I never thought I could have a conversation with. I never thought I had enough confidence to have a conversation with. But it's helping me to grow. It's helping me to understand. It's helping me to, to see that there is more to my community than just the three people I talk to on Instagram. There is more people in my community than the two neighbors that live on the left and right side of me. There are more to community than just people I like their posts on, on Instagram or Facebook or what have you. So I've dedicated this next year to just being on Instagram. I have deleted every other social media from my phone because that's how much I believe in what we're doing. 
I have one other app, but that's YouTube. I mean, I watch movies on that because it's free because I'm a cheap guy. <laughs> I'm Chinese. I'm a cheap guy. So, you know, <laughs> but uh, I have deleted all the other social media accounts because I want to dedicate my energy, my time, and build a community that's been needed for a while. A safe place. Everybody can come home, throw your hat off on the counter, just sit down, relax, and go, hey, let's have a chat. Let's share what you're doing. Show me your new art. Show me, Cindy, show me your new evolution, where you are now. Share that with us. I love to do that. I'm glad but you I are. Do thank, you for, thank you for sharing your time with us. We're waiting for Grace to call, and she said, I have to go brush my I gave her scoldings one time. I said, hey, you're going to come on camera. You're going to get your hair done. Brush your hair. Uh, Ari had her hair up in a bun, and I said it last week. We're going live pretty soon, people. Put on your good clothes, your good shirt. <laughs> brush your hair. You know, brush your teeth if you have to. But I washed my face live. and hands yeah. before I came at the end, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that, that helps a lot. But I, I do want to have more, more creators on here. And I would like for people like Josh to host one night, people like Grizz to host one night, because it's growth for them as well. It's not just for me. I was I lucked out. I had, I think, a really great guest presented tonight with you, uh, Cindy. And oh, I appreciate you. that. I do. And And I think now is a good time to say welcome to our community. There she is. And we are so honored to have you be part of this community. And of course, you are welcome anytime. All there right. she is. Now, now you can see Grizz. That's Grizz below you. That's Cindy. Cindy, that's Grizz. You already met Josh. So, Grizz, will you do us the honor of pulling a card for a collector before Cindy thinks she has to hang up? I feel like we're in like the Brady Bunch intro. Like I can just like... <laughs> can, can can I be the youngest one in girls? Because no, actually, no, no. I would I'm Alice, I would be so more like Alice. Alice. I would be no. I would be Alice. I'm the oldest. <laughs> All right, Grizz, you're up, Grizz. Okay. Well, um, hi everybody. <laughs> I'm. Starting out the whole, like, I just do oracle cards, um, guide cards, you know, angel cards, and it's, I'm still pretty new at it, but um, I was going to pull one card, so I'm just going to read it to you guys. I have um, Vanishing Mirror, and it's, kind of, it's probably going to be backwards. So it's a Vanishing Mirror. Um, it says Ego Sublimination, if you guys want to look at the of the art. Okay. I love looking at the numbers too. And then this one's the deep quiet and stillness. It's a little hard to see. And the color's definitely different. It's not so purple. It's probably because I have my Himalayan salt lamp on. So it gives it that, maybe, that red. You, maybe you can put it up on your Jay Tiger Instagram then. Okay, because oh, like yeah. the art on cool. is really, really nice. The color is so nice, yeah. but it just That'd be doesn't. Cool. That's it's a pretty deck. Hmm. Uh, that's a pretty deck. Yeah, it is. I really like it. Um. So let me go through it. Fifty-eight. I'm kind of blind here, so <laughs> my eyes. My eyes. Are, like I just got these glasses in January. And I feel like I need an upgrade already. <laughs> just like I'm like going blind here. <laughs> Give me a sec. We're focusing. I need a one more line. Yeah, a little bit. Let's see. All right. All right. Here we go. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. So the vanishing mirror mirror is a 
ego sublimination, letting go of self-awareness, becoming a vessel of authority. Do you ever wonder if self-definition has become too rigid to fix around what you've come to learn so that, you're, so that you contract your life into zones of safe versus unsafe? This escape over there, well, that might be too risky. Judgment, fear, self-righteousness, and overconfidence are only some of the traits that keep you from evolving. We are all products mm, of the our- word evolve. Yep. Oh, yeah. There Sorry, go. Yeah. Sorry about that. We are all products of our conditioning. Mm-hmm. So remember that this is part of the human experience. Yet you are not remain static. The only what you expect. Even if it appears ambitious, it's still too narrow. You go nowhere when you hesitate to move out of your comfort zone. When you focus too much on yourself, this way you become a servant of the ego. And thought out, removing the magic possibility. Imagine looking into a mirror and seeing only what you are. If you can let your self-definition soften, moving beyond the veil to your potential. A magical emptiness this were all things possible. Look again. Who could you be? What would you see reflected if you allowed yourself to be other than how you define yourself now? Nothing less is required of you now in this moment. Let go of who you think you are and allow a new you to emerge. You will recognize yourself as what you are, a partner in co-creation and service to the divine. Doesn't it feel good? Anybody? That's pretty cool. I, I, I noticed, and I'm going to go back on that, but the word that is sticking in my head, and that's going to be the word for tonight, is evolution. Evolve. Yeah. Evolve. And, and it's that, really I, for all of us. We, you know, oftentimes in life, we just kind of become like stagnant, like it says. And, you know, fear comes over. And, yeah, like that veil, you got to, you know, rip that veil off and just um, try to persevere and, you know, find the things in life that give you joy. So we all go through that. You know, it's one point. You know what I think is so cool about tonight, besides having an awesome guest tonight, Cindy, and awesome people that she's brought with herself, her friends, her followers, and new people, please, Make sure, Trippy Tower, Aubrey, and everybody else who is watching in the replay, please make sure you follow um, Jade Tiger and JJ Baya, as well as um, Starry Eyed Senses. Please make sure you follow them. They are all part of our community. We would like to welcome you all to the community. Welcome back. But what I think is um, so cool about tonight, and this is probably going to wrap everything in a pretty little bowl. We did it once. We're going to do it again. We're going to put it in a bigger box. And we're going to put a bigger ribbon and a, pr- a prettier ribbon that has more than one color, a rainbow of color. Is mm-hmm. that Cindy's art has gone to an evolution. Our reading tonight with Riz, your card that you pulled the explanation had the word involved in, evolve in it. But I think tonight, as a team, as a group, as a community, by having one of the most awesome guests that we've had on, we have now evolved into a community that we are trying to create. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I might have had the idea, but everybody brought something to the table tonight. And we are now evolved in our first evolution of being a community, and what we are trying to to grow, and what we are trying to build. Mm-hmm. And for me, it is such, it, it actually, one of the selfish reasons why I wanted to do this, to create this community, is to give myself some work. To have work in something that I believe in and I'm passionate in. And I haven't felt like that in a long time. 
Can I just can I, add that that card yeah. also said something about stepping out of your comfort zone? Yeah. 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 Cindy did that tonight. She actually stepped out of her comfort zone and said, yeah. all right, let, <laughs> let's let's see what this dick pic looks like. But thank God, our editor edited that out as well. Thank <laughs> God, she went and stepped out of her comfort zone and said, I like this. I like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it back. It might take me a couple of days, but I like his energy. I'm going to answer it back. Mm -hmm. I had to think about it. Very respectful. And of course, I wanted you to know that I wasn't pushing you. I appreciate that. And I appreciate the opportunity. You guys are awesome. Hey. By the way, how's your baby doing? How's your daughter? She's she's okay. It's harder to get her to stop running around. Mm. Like, because she has two broken toes. Ugh. I she got eight more. Why is she going to stop? Why is she going to stop? <laughs> she got eight more. Yeah. I don't know, but she she's fine. I mean, I think if she wasn't fine, she wouldn't be running around. So That's I'm yeah. sure she's okay. That's how you That's know true. it's okay when they're not yeah. like, complaining, when they're starting to eat, run around, do what they normally do. You know, they're healing. They're okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know when they're okay when they say, oh, mom. Ah, Dad, you know they're fine. You walk away. Yeah. Go in your room. Go in your room. Oh, Dad. Yeah, they're fine. <laughs> Speaking they're fine. of babies, my oh. daughter literally just came over. She almost peeked over. Aw. The girl. Aww. It's like, we look inspired over. people. Huh? We inspired people. Audrey yeah. said, I've been doing art forever, and this is super inspirational. Nice. Nice. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Now sometimes even if you just touch one person, you know, so something in them, you know, it makes a big difference. You know, it may not necessarily be a lot of us, but you never know what the other person's going through in their life, you know? So one person well, can definitely make a big difference. As a, as a licensed insurance salesman, we have mm -hmm. the saying where the word of mouth is your best form of advertising. Yeah. And this is what we're doing here is word of mouth. Mm -hmm. That's our best form of advertising. Not social media, not even going live, but the word of mouth. Because when we get off, Josh is going to talk to his friends. You guys missed out on a great live tonight. Cindy is going to tell her husband, man, I really like that community. I want to go back. I want to share more. I've been invited to go back and talk about aliens. Yeah. What we <laughs> yeah, I gotta tell you about right. my alien experience someday. Oh, we <laughs> need like a whole day on aliens. Oh, yes. Like, I've that had would my be a great day. We're gonna That's schedule cool. you for that, Cindy. So be there. Okay. Okay. I know. Okay. I was peeking at your art. I was like, ooh, I like this. Thank right? you. Josh? Josh, any words of encouragement, of wisdom, of guidance? I mean, I listen, I know for a lot of people, even people here in this room tonight, it's been a really long, very tiring week. <laughs> and I'm just super, super, super happy that we were able to get together tonight because this has been an amazing life and I'm really sad that I missed some of it. But um, it was really wonderful meeting you, Cindy. Thank you for coming. Um, Grizz, your your card was like very resonating with the energy, at least for me. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, and um, I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. Yeah, thank you. It's been one of those weeks for sure. <laughs> I'm ready to sleep. <laughs> We're going to get you to bed soon. Anyway. Cindy. Cindy, thank you, Josh. Cindy, any last words for us for this, uh, for this live? Um, I don't know. Thanks for having me. You all seem really cool, and I'm really excited to talk to you all further and be a part of this some more. Awesome. Good. We are, we are we definitely are we honored. Tomorrow, or because I know there's some people who can't make it. Uh, 
you know what? Okay, so I got invited to dinner by my ex boss. Remember Tom from last week? Mm-hmm. Tom. Yeah, he's very adamant about getting together for dinner tomorrow. It's probably an awesome. So I said, deal. You know, uh, well, I said the only way you get me to go to dinner, I don't kiss on the first date, but you have to pay for the whole check. And so he said, we're there. So I might be streaming from there tomorrow night. But if not, we're going to have Josh host tomorrow night. Josh, we're going to have you host three plus me. I still want to make sure we do it as a... Okay. As a community, and if it's only just you and two other people, then it'll be two plus me. But I would still like to have that represented. I would still like for us to put that out in the community. Who knows? Trippy Tower might come on and say, "Hey, I want to share something," because I will want to watch the replay as well. Mm-hmm. All right, sounds good. So before we leave, um, I. I Josh and I are actually working on something really, really big. I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm trying to learn it as fast as possible. But uh, once we get that, um, the understanding of how to use this and get it done, we are going to make, actually, I'm going to have Josh make the announcement in one of our lives and share the project that we are working on. Carrie, welcome. Uh, Crystal Blessings. That is Cindy up there in the corner. She was a featured artist tonight. Um, Let's put it this way. You will be able to see your portion of your presentation here with us in a future time. Very soon. So that's why I kept seeing editor, edit her age out, edit her real name out, edit Ithaca out and Ithmes out because it's two different things, but <laughs> we are working on that. We are getting that done. Um, I'm a little slow about it, so I apologize, but we're going to get that done. Okay. So anyone that who, who we'd like to part, be part of the community, we, who, have, who does become part of the community, and we'd like for them to be able to watch a replay. Did you see Cindy was on last night? I didn't hear her mention her age. She kept talking about everything about her age. <laughs> Uh, but I'm excited because I believe Josh is the right person for this. And so Josh is the awesome, already. I can tell. Yeah. He's, he's a wealth of knowledge. So if you're not following him, everybody in the room, you need to follow this guy. He's I mean, I don't post knowledge. much on Instagram, but you can catch me here. <laughs> and, and as far as Grizz goes, Grizz, if you ever need someone in your corner, someone with such a motherly type of love and mm-hmm. understanding and not have any um, prejudice against you, she's the person you want to turn to. Aww. If you need somebody to put a head on your shoulder and say, hey, Mom, I had such a terrible day, that's the person to go to. Oh, Don't yeah. come to me. I'm a grouchy old stingy Chinese <laughs> man outside of, Paris, outside of <laughs> Instagram, so don't come to me. I will tell no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Editor, we want to edit that out. I, I'm here. <laughs> always. Just just you know, just mess with me. If you're here. Just Thank edit you, everything we, out. Yeah. There'll just be pictures. We want to be a slideshow. Yeah. But I, I didn't see my age. You don't have to edit that one. <laughs> I learned a long time ago you never ask a woman their age. I learned that a long time. <laughs> so the first question I asked my ex-wife on our first date was, "How old are you? When's your birthday?" <laughs> oh dang! Yeah. But, so you see where it started yeah. from, yeah, Grace. That's why. That's why today I'm divorced. <laughs> that's the so only now, reason. Now, <laughs> because the myth came true. But now, when people ask me, "Hey, when's your birthday?" I tell them the same answer every time. My birthday is every year. That's the answer. When's your birthday? Every year. My birthday is every year. You didn't be Pacific. Pacific. So, anyway, I dragged that on. That was a terrible joke. Anybody up for a joke before we leave? Yeah, okay, we are. 
All right, some jokes. Edit, editor, we're going to put this on our... Uh, is it going to be... Um, a joke. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> no Shame on you, Chris. Huh. Shame. Yeah, put the, bed, put the kids to bed because we're about to read the joke. <laughs> I might have said this one. Oh no, we want we don't want to say that. One. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, here we go. Ah, a beautiful woman walks into a very chic bar. She sees a very handsome, uh, very handsome man across the room and approaches him. She smiles and says, "My name is Carmen." I had chosen that name because of the two things that I love the most, cars and men. What's your name, she asked. He looks at her and says, BJ Titsenkopf. <laughs> and with that, editor, thank you for editing that out. <laughs> thank you, Cindy. I just fucked up the whole night with your beautiful presentation with his dumbass joke. Thank you for joining us. Please thank your family for us. Chris, thank you for the cards, for reading, and the word evolution is our word for tonight. Josh, as always, thank you so much. Carrie, you'll be able to watch the replay soon. Trippy Tarot, thank you for joining us. And I think Aubrey was here. Yeah. Ari, thank you for being here tonight mm -hmm. as well. Um, I look Carrie. forward to working with you again. And yeah. Carrie, yes. Ari left. I really do. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll leave next one up to you, and maybe the next slide we have, maybe Grizz can can be the host. I don't know. If I'm... We'll <laughs> About <laughs> Never. this is an evolution for all of us. Oh. You can, you can. But thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you, Grizz. Thank you. Grizz. Thank you. Great meeting Josh. you. Thank you so Bye. much. Everybody have a good night. <laughs> okay, I'm watching it. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh.